Well, hi there, Booktube. It's Roz, and it's kind of the middle of September as I'm recording this, which is a bit early for me to record my next month's TBR, but I'm taking my, my Victober hostly duties very seriously um, and trying to do it properly. So um, here we go. And in fact, almost all of my reading in, in October will be Victober related and, and Victorian writing. Um, which indeed, this time last year, I, I read nothing but Victorian literature all month and, and how lovely it was. I think I've got one other thing I'm going to read this month and I won't mention it here. First up, of course, I'm going to be taking part in the group read, which is of Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge, as you will know if you've watched any of the announcement videos. Um, I'm going to give you its, um, its full title, actually. It is The Life and Death of the Mayor of Casterbridge, a Story of a Man of Character by Thomas Hardy and it was I think about I think it was his 10th major novel and um, was published in 1886. This is my original copy from the 1970s when I first read it. Um, I have a, a sneaking suspicion that when I attempt to read this it's probably, I, I'm a bit worried that the spine's going to, you know, it's gonna all going to crack and come to pieces and, you know, I may have to get an ebook version to, um, to be the one I actually read in person. Anyway, just a reminder that the way the group read is working this year is really simple because it's two chapters a day from the 1st to the 23rd of October and I uh, hope you're going to join us. Now, most Victobers for the last sort of... Uh, few years I've been sort of using as a as an excuse or a, no a, a nudge a nudge to read uh one of Charles Dickens's novels that either I've never read or that I've, it's so long since I've read it that it you know it's it I, I haven't experienced it properly as a, as a as a mature reader and I had in mind to read Little Dorrit this year but when I heard Katie's challenge was to read a Bildung's Roman or coming of age novel I thought no what I've got to do is go back to David Copperfield. Now, I last read David Copperfield back in the 1970s, like the Mayor of Casterbridge, and I remember enjoying it, but not perhaps loving it. I think I was actually quite shocked by some of the, the almost like child abuse at, at the beginning. Um, it's in many ways um, Dickens' most autobiographical novel and quite long, but... Uh, with some really memorable characters and I know there are things about David Copperfield that have stuck in my head ever since so I I'm going to enjoy the experience of going back to it I think. Petra's challenge is to read a book and watch an adaptation. Now I know, I know myself all too well and I know that if there's a if there's a, a readathon challenge that I'm going to fail to do it's always the one to watch something somehow it's it, it I leave it till last and then end up you know not doing it now but I'm not going to do that this year because as I say I'm taking my Victober hostly duties seriously but also because I reckon both the Mayor of Castbridge and David Copperfield have great potential for this the Mayor of Castbridge had a film that came out in 2003 which I which I didn't see um and David Copperfield there's a a, a film of that a really good film in 2019 that I really wanted to see and and failed to get to the cinema at the time and uh, I'm itching to watch that so I think I'll make it this time now Marissa's challenge was to read a short work so that's a very doable thing of course and I'm going to use that to remedy a gap in my Victorian literature reading okay I tend to avoid short stories they're, they're not they're not my 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 first thing that I will go to when, when I'm when I'm when I'm reading and I think that that is why I have never read anything by Sheridan Le Fanu because it, he is a Victorian writer who, who who didn't really write novels he was really just known for his short stories and novellas and uh, every Victober I hear people sort of enthusing about reading something of his and I, I've never done it. So I'm going to use this to get me to read Camilla by um, Mufanu. Now that is a, it's a kind of like a vampire story and that will fit really nicely with the fact that this time last year for Victober I read Dracula. So, or reread it possibly because I've read it, but you know, 
and hadn't read it as an adult. And um, and, and at the time, people said, "Oh, you should read um, Carmilla," which sort of helped inspire it because it was written in eighteen seventy two. I, yeah, I may get some other short stories in as well, but that's my commitment, as it were. Now, Kate's challenge is to read something with a disabled character or or, or a character that has a sort of long-term health condition, long-term ill health. And um, I love that challenge. And I was, it reminded me that one of the characters that I sort of half remember from reading David Copperfield, you know, 45 years ago or whatever, um, was a character called Mr Dick, who I really liked. He's a very lovable character. And I think that he was probably a portrayal of an adult with a learning disability. So I'm looking forward to to, to, to looking out for that in a different way now and, and, and seeing if seeing if I've remembered that right. Carmilla being a vampire story, I, I would put good money on there being... Um, probably a female character in there that has gone into a decline and has become like an, an invalid and this will be linked to you know the, the whole vampire plot but it seems to come up in in vampire stories and I, and I almost feel like maybe it's a way of explaining girls or young women or, or whatever that do that you know maybe they're anemic or anorexic or you know have an eating disorder and, and go into a sort of a become an invalid um I don't know. Anyway, we shall see. But I wanted also to pick something specifically for Kate's challenge. And I'm, again, using this as a nudge to read something that I'd heard about and been intrigued by, but never got around to reading. And that is Wooden Tony by Lucy Lane Clifford. And it's a, a short story, sort of fairy tale-ish, but not really a children's story, that um, was published in 1890, 1892. And I have heard we shall see when I read it, that it, it's it's sort of one of the first depictions of uh, an autistic child um, as a sort of central character in, in a story. I don't know. I shall read it and report back. Now, my challenge is to read poetry. As you know, Victorian poetry, long or short. And it, this has changed my one of my Victober reading plans because before I knew I was going to be a host, I had it in mind to maybe read um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning's sort of full length, um, like verse novel, I suppose you'd call it, or Lee. And I do want to do that, but I can see that I'm not going to fit that into this October, uh, Victober. So I will save that for another year and or indeed not in Victober. And because I know I'm going to be reading lots of Victorian poetry and, and linking that into maybe making a few videos and so on. So instead, I'm going to focus on making some inroads into my um, Penguin Book of Victorian Verse. There are 147 different poets represented in this book. Now, I'm wondering if, if I tried, whether I could read at least one poem by every single one in the course of, of the month. That'd be about sort of five a day. It's not impossible, is it? I, I might, I might give it a shot. I also will very specifically um, be sure to read two sort of longer but not book-length poems that uh, that I I've read excerpts of, but never read the whole thing. And one of those is Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti, and the other is The Ballad of Reading Jail by Oscar Wilde. So I will definitely, definitely get to both of those. Now, those are meeting all the challenges, but. I would like to do a little bit of off challenge reading as well, and I've I've developed a, a Victober habit over the last few years of um, reading another uh, of the Barsetshire um, chronicles by Trollope each year, and so this year I'm due to read Framley Parsonage, the the fourth of of the Barsetshire chronicles. So I'd like to get to that if I can. The other thing that I've been doing over the last sort of couple of years is trying to read all the major novels by my favourite Victorian novelist. Yes, yeah, no, yes, indeed, George Eliot. And I did that and I was sort of, oh, look, I've read all of them and I've got to the end. And then um, a few people, including I think Kim of Middle of a Book March, pointed out that I really ought to read Scenes of Clerical Life, which was her first 
sort of novel length publication but actually it was it's three linked novellas um and but it almost almost makes a novel and so I would really like to read that um this year and I reckon well I could at least read the first of those novellas and that would be a sort of a second a second dip into to shorter fiction um as in marissa's challenge so um those are my victober plans i would love to hear about yours are you going to read any of the i hope you're going to take part in the group reading you're going to read any of the same things that i am are there any things that you um particularly sort of like and love about the ones i've got in mind do share and uh, i hope you're looking forward to victober as much as i am <laughs>